Hey, what's going on everyone out there in YouTube land? So today we are going to check out a mechanical mod, a hybrid mechanical mod. This one coming from Arc Mods. This is the Arc version number two. If you guys remember a long time ago, I reviewed the version one from Arc Mods. Well, today we have the version two and they look totally different. At the moment, got the skill RDA sitting on top, got a dual Clapton coil in there, ohming out around a 0.1 freshly charged 18650. Vaping on some really good liquid that we're going to talk about in a moment, but first, let's have a vape. Now, today's liquid was sent over by Vape Milk. These guys actually sent me over their entire line a few weeks ago, and I've been trying a few liquids here and there. I did enjoy two of them last week that I recommended. I had some over the weekend that I really didn't like, but there was one in particular that I really did enjoy. Uh, me and my wife actually really like this one. This one's called Paris. And this, to me, is like a kind of like a sweetened vanilla milk. The description on their website, I won't read the entire description, but it is a sweet French vanilla cream with vanilla bean, marshmallows, and milky notes. So it's more of like a sweetened vanilla milk. I don't really get much of the marshmallow. I don't notice really much of the marshmallow, but I do get the vanilla and the milk. Overall, it's to me, it's like a sweetened kind of vanilla milk. If you like the milky style vapes, you're really gonna like this one. It doesn't have any funky odor, or should I say odor? It doesn't have any funky taste to it. Um, tastes real good in a dripper in a tank, and been really enjoying it actually. It's an 8020 VGPG. The price on the vape milk line, they only come in 120, 120 ml bottles, $22.99. Now I know if you sign up, for, um, if you like them on Instagram or you sign up for their newsletter, they'll email you a 15% off coupon code. So that will knock the price down a little bit lower. Uh, they are available in 0, 3, 6, and 12 milligrams. And links for the, uh, the Paris will be in the description. Now the ARC version 2 was sent over directly by ARC Mods for the purpose of this review. If you guys are interested in checking one out later on after the video, I will have some links posted in the description. And currently at the moment, looking at their website, the lowest price for the version 2, $99 for the full copper, and the highest price being $134.99. Also keep in mind that it does say on their website that these are made, not, manuf not just designed, but actually made and manufactured in the USA. So what we have here is the ARC version two. Now I thought it might be like a slight update from the version one, but comparing these two side by side, and we'll look at, look at them more in the up close, comparing the ARC one and the ARC two side by side, they're totally different devices. So I'm not too sure why they went with the ARC name on this one. The shape is different. This one's a hybrid, this one's not. I mean, they're both 18650 mech mods, but um, they both look and operate just a little bit differently. So once again, not sure why they're sticking with the ARC name. I probably would have called this something a little bit different, but um, this one is different. It's unique, it's got some cool features to it, and we're gonna check those out right now. So with all that said, let's dive down. Let's have an up close look at the ARC version number two. Now when ARC Mod sent over the V2, they did not include the package, but I can assure you the V2 does come enclosed in a cardboard tube. As far as any accessories or optional parts or pieces, you're not gonna get anything extra. All you're going to get is the battery tube, the button, and your hybrid top cap. Dimensions on the new V2, because of this kind of curved shape that we have going on, at its largest point, 27 millimeters. In the center, I measured 21 millimeters. And from the bottom of the switch to the top of the top cap, I measured 92 millimeters tall. Now, unlike the Arc V1, the V2 is a hybrid mechanical mod. So if you're not familiar with hybrids, if you're not sure how they work, if you don't know what atomizer to use on top, then a hybrid is not for you. Using the wrong atomizer on a hybrid can be very, very dangerous. So these devices are for experienced users only. At the top, we do have a hybrid top cap that measures 24.3 millimeters in diameter. This V2 will only work with atomizers 24 millimeters and below. Anything over 24, and it will not fit on the top cap. You'll notice at the top, we do have two holes drilled out. And the purpose of those two holes is if you end up screwing this cap too far down into the battery tube and you can't break it loose, you can use a pair of tweezers, line it up with the air holes, and you can spin the top cap off. 
Also, you'll notice we have some channels milled out. So that way, if you're using an RDA that requires airflow from the bottom, you will get airflow along the sides and from inside of the tube. So this one will work with bottom airflow RDAs. Removing the top cap, the threads, I can tell you right now, are a little on the dry side. And I think the reason is because it's copper. We got a copper cap and a copper tube, so the, the threads are gonna be a little dry. But over time, I really think the threads are gonna smoothen up. So the way this works is you take your atomizer and you screw down the hybrid top cap. Make sure the channels are facing up towards the atomizer. Screw it down. Thread it onto the device. Just turn it a few times. Don't screw it all the way down. Take your battery, positive up. Put your switch on there. Lock it in place. You'll notice we do have battery rattle, but your battery adjustment is going to be in the top cap. So as you screw down your atomizer, you'll notice it's kind of recesses down into the mod. That's going to eliminate your battery rattle. Screw it down till it's snug. Don't crank it down or tighten it because you're going to bend your, your positive. And then once it's snugged, you'll notice we have zero battery rattle. Also along the top, you'll notice that we do have four holes drilled out for battery ventilation. And one thing I noticed about these holes is that the holes don't go all the way through the tube. If you look on the inside of the tube, you're not going to see the ventilation holes. Now what I did is I screwed down the, the switch and the cap and I blew inside the tube to see if any pressure would come out. And we do get airflow from the vent ports. And I believe what's going on here is I think they either milled the holes on an angle to where you can't see the holes underneath that lip on the inside, or we have a copper ring at the top right here that's kind of covering up the ventilation holes. But nonetheless, we do have ventilation ports and they do work. We do have a single 18650 battery tube. And as you can see here, I do have the matte black finish. Once again, it's available in either a matte black sand blasted black a straight black it comes in an olive green or an all copper we have the arc mod logo machined into the bottom of the switch and the switch has the same feature as the version one which is going to be their four panel locking system and what's really cool about the switch and i loved it on the v1 is you don't have to keep screwing and unscrewing to remove your batteries it's a simple turn and you remove the button when you pop it back on, just make sure you line up the four notches with the four channels on the tube. I always have a problem doing that, but once you line them up, you got to make sure you line up the right ones. There we go. And then you just lock it. That's all you do. Really simple. Locked, unlocked, pop it off, put it back on, lock. Now I got an atomizer installed, I got a battery installed, and at the moment it is locked. So if you put it on a tabletop, it's not going to fire. If you hit, it's not going to fire. And to unlock it, all you simply do is just turn the switch. Just give it maybe one or two turns, and there you go. And then when you're done vaping it and you want to lock it, just tighten it back up, and it's locked. Pretty neat feature. And when you unscrew the firing switch, you don't have to worry about unlocking the cap because the tension on this lock on the cap is pretty tight. So as you're unscrewing this, you're not going to end up unscrewing the cap because the battery puts pressure on here and it holds actually pretty, pretty snug in place. But always remember, loosen up your atomizer first before you put this cap on and then tighten down your atomizer, make it a little bit snug. And as you can see, um, it's not absolutely seamless, but it's pretty close and of course, the matte finish will pick up juice and fingerprints. Now if you guys want to peek at the inside of the battery tube, there's a look at the inside. All the machine work, very nicely done. I think they did a really good job. There's that locking system. And if we have a closer look at the switch, I'll break down the switch for you. Uh, we do have a 7 millimeter diameter silver contact pin for the negative. And also, we do have magnets on here. They're using 5 pound magnets. So this thing is pretty beefy. And to disassemble the switch, really easy. All you gotta do is just unscrew the button. And you'll never unscrew it too far because this thing has a lot of threads on it. But unscrew the button. And I'm still unscrewing this thing. There we go. 
There's your beefy five pound magnets. You get two different size magnets. Those are humongous. Holy hell. There we go. And here is your switch, the gunmetal switch. Here's your silver contact. And there's the copper button itself, or there's the button. There's the copper housing. And if you guys want to compare the V2 up against the V1, I reviewed the V1 a long time ago, and I did give it a recommendation. I did enjoy it. Here is the Arc Mods V1, and you'll see they're two totally different devices. Uh, we got the curve thing going on here. This one is not a hybrid. As you can see, and it has that four panel locking system on the actual top cap and on the switch. And you'll notice also on the version one, the air vents, the cutouts, they go all the way through the, the actual battery tube. And this is one chunky piece of stainless steel. And I believe they still make and sell the version ones. And then the version two, they are advertising the version two as a competition hybrid mechanical mod. So yeah. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much going to be it for the up close and personal. Let's jump back up and let's have a vape. So let's talk a little bit about the Arc Mod. Now, let's talk about the V1 really quick, because when they sent me the V1 a long time ago for review, they sent it over before it went on sale. So they wanted me to check it out and review it, you know, before it went on sale. The mod was awesome. Presentation box was awesome. All the extras that you got with it, I loved. It suffered from one important thing. It had no ventilation ports. And I emailed them when I got it, and I said, listen, you guys got to put some ventilation on this device before you release it, because if you don't, this thing is going to be considered a pipe bomb. Luckily, they listened. They took my advice. Um, they cut some air channels or some slots along the tube, and now it has proper ventilation. And I gave them a thumbs up for that. So I reviewed it, and, and everything went well. Now the V2 comes out, and I'm assuming they have ventilation porch, which they do. We got four vent ports along the top right here. But the, what the, the way they did it, um, kind of confused me a little bit because you could see the vent holes but when you go on the inside you just you don't know you can't see the holes drilled all the way through now I removed my atomizer my battery I blew inside the tube I put some pressure in the tube and you could feel the air coming out of all four holes it does release pressure but it just wasn't as open as the version one or other devices now I compared it up against like the nemesis I got like four or five other mech mods some mech mods have a little bit more wide open ventilation and some were more restricted like the V2. Like for instance, the Nemesis, it's really got really restricted uh, ventilation ports. So even though the vent ports are restricted, I do believe that it does have enough ventilation to where if a battery were to ever vent for some reason, I don't wish it upon anyone, but if it were to vent, I do believe the gases will escape. There is enough, once again, room or there's enough of an opening for the gases to get out, so that way this thing won't turn into a bomb. Once again, vent ports are very important on a mech mod because if your battery vents, the gases need somewhere to go. If not, the battery is just going to go, it's just going to blow up the mod. And I've seen one of these things, not this particular mod, but I've seen a mech mod vent in person a few feet away from me, and it was terrifying. It scared the hell out of me. So, yeah, just kind of want to cover that. We do have end ports. They do, they do work. They do work. So don't worry too much about that. Um, I do wish they were a little bit more wide open, but I still think they're going to do the job. So yeah, that's it for the ventilation port whole ordeal. All right, so let's go through some of the pros and cons on the V2 here. We'll start off with the pros. Pro number one, this device is very comfortable to use, and I think it looks awesome. The Hybrid connection, the way it's kind of designed, I love the way the atomizer is kind of recessed down inside the mod. It kind of gets rid of that top cap. I just think it looks much, much better um, with certain atomizers and also the curve. I know the curve is not going to be for everyone, but let me tell you, this curve is very comfortable. Whether you hold it with the three fingers or your entire fist, this thing is just really comfortable to use. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up for the looks and how comfor comfortable 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 it is to use i can't talk the next pro is the battery adjustment love the way you adjust for battery rattle on here pretty much with you know every other device or mainly other all the devices you have the little pin inside of a pin you have to keep screwing your pin in or out 
to adjust the proper length so that way you don't have battery rattle. Sometimes it gets a little bit annoying, but with this one, all you do is just simply screw down the, the atomizer and that gets rid of the battery rattle. This battery inside of here is nice and tight, no rattle. So gonna give it a thumbs up for that. The next pro is going to be the button. The switch on here, the button is beautiful. Nice, silky, smooth button. You can fire it along the side. You can fire it in the center. You can use your pinky and it's very comfortable to fire. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs up for the button. Also, if you're wondering, um, the button does lock as you turn it right then and there, it's locked. If you have it unlocked and you set it on your desk, the weight of the mod will not fire it. So you can set it down unlocked, but I don't recommend doing that because you set it down unlocked, you're gonna forget it's unlocked, you're gonna forget it's there, and who knows, something could happen, it could automatically fire, the weight can eventually put pressure on that button, and it could end up firing. So even though it won't fire, under its own weight, I just don't recommend it. But nonetheless, the button on this thing is awesome. So give it a thumbs up for the button. The next pro is going to be the four panel locking system. Just like on the version one, we had the four panel locking system on the top cap and the switch, we now have it on the, on the bottom right here. Now I don't use a mech mod every day, but for those out there that use a mech mod all day, every day, you guys probably go through batteries like crazy. So there's a lot of screwing and unscrewing of your switch. With this one, just give it a right little turn. I was stuck there and just pop it off. And to put it back on, you gotta find the channels. You gotta make sure you line up the right channels and there you go. You just click it, locks in place. I make it look hard sometimes, I know, but really love this idea. And you know, it does have a satisfying click and lock. And even on the V1, like I said, it had the same feature and I never once had an issue with it to where it unloosened or it unlocked and the battery went flying so they did transfer over this feature this four panel system to the v2 and I think it's an awesome idea so gonna give it a thumbs up for that I'm leaking see that leaking that's gonna be one of my cons in a moment but anyways the, the next pro is going to be battery ventilation okay we do have battery ventilation it is a little bit restricted I'm not too sure exactly how they did it, but the way I test for ventilation, I just blow into the tube. And if it, the air escapes, then it has ventilation, proper ventilation. So I'm gonna give it a thumbs up for that. I didn't have to remind them this time to actually put vent holes on the device. So that's a good thing. And the last pro is going to be the combination of the silver pin, the minimal amount of threads, the solid battery tube, and the hybrid connection, I think all play a role in this device having very low voltage drop. Now I have no way of testing voltage drop. I don't have that many mech mods to compare it to, but I can tell you vaping at a point one with a fully charged battery, this thing hits pretty hard for me and very satisfying. And it's just very instant, man. This thing just has like a, I know it's a mech mod, so there's not gonna be a really slow ramp up time. But I'm using Clapton coils on this thing, dual Claptons, and usually on some mech mods, it's got a slow ramp up time, but this thing is pretty instantaneous. And they actually advertise it as a competition mech mod, but yeah, competition we know is a bunch of nonsense. Anyways, the combination of all the materials and the design of the hybrid connection, I think, once again, all play an important role of this thing having very low voltage drops, so I'm gonna give it a thumbs up for that. So there are the pros, let's go through some of the cons. Con number one, like you guys just seen, my atomizer was leaking. If you're an over dripper or if you're leaky like I am and you're really messy, this may not be the device for you because the way the hybrid connection is designed and the way the atomizer kind of sits inside the mod, if your atomizer leaks, <clears throat> the liquid is gonna go straight down into your battery, into the battery compartment and possibly damage your battery. So keep in mind with this one, you wanna stay nice and dry. Just remember that. Um, I have had instances where I had to remove my atomizer and take a rag and clean out the uh, the threads on the inside because I got a little too crazy and my atomizer was leaking. So even though it's user error, I'm gonna give it a con for that. The next con, also, you can only use it with 24 millimeter atomizers and below. So that kind of plays into the hybrid connection once again. Even though I like the way the hybrid connection looks, still, you know, 24 and below, um, I got some really nice 25s I like to use on here, but 
Anything slightly over 24, I think I measured 24.10, anything over that, not going to work on here. So that is a con. The next con, only available in copper. I know some people don't like copper, they don't like the smell, they don't like the look of it. So yeah, only copper at the moment. And the last pro, and I didn't talk about this much in the up close, is the finish. Now, personally, if I were to buy this device, I would get the all copper finish because it's the cheapest one at the moment, 99 bucks, and I don't have to worry about the finish peeling off. And I can tell you right now, after using this for a little over a week, the black, this matte black is already coming off. It's coming off along the tube. And there's something about this finish, I don't see it holding up too well on copper. The sandblasted one may be a little bit more durable, but I'm not sure I don't have it. But um, if I were to go with one, it would be the copper. But once again, going to give it a con for the finish, the black finish, because the black finish is already starting to uh, wear off. All right, so there are the pros and the cons. Let's have one last vape. So at the end of the day, would I recommend the ARC version 2? The answer is going to be yes. This is an awesome performing mod. Um, just hits hard. It's really satisfying vape. Love the way it looks. Love the way it feels in the hands. Has a few annoyances to it. You can only use a 24 below, but I can overlook that. Using the skill on here, actually I've only used the skill RDA on here, and this is a perfect combination. The ventilation holes on here do not worry me any bit because, once again, they are a little restricted, but still, they do release any pressure that's put into the tube. The finish on here, on the other hand, is not the greatest. So, if I were to buy this, which I would, I would go with the all-copper one because the black one I don't think is going to hold up at all. But uh, if you don't care too much about the finish, then, yeah, it really doesn't matter. And one thing that really struck me, and I don't talk much about price because price is always subjective, but... Being $99 and made in the USA almost seems too good to be true. And I was kind of wondering, you know, eh, is it really made in the USA? But they do say on their website, manufactured in the US of A. So that's a pretty damn good price for being made in the USA. So once again, at the end of the day, yes, I would highly recommend it. Once again, this one is for experienced users only, guys. If you don't know anything about mech mods or hybrid connections, do not touch this device. All right, so that's pretty much going to be it. That's all I got for you guys today. If you have any comments or questions on this beauty, please feel free to leave them below. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to everyone very, very soon. Make sure you guys build safe and vape on.